I will be sharing this presentation together with my colleague, Jan Zavrel. So later during this presentation, I will hand him, or I will ask someone to hand him presenter status. So he will show you what we actually implemented. So this uh, presentation will be about enhanced interior gateway routing protocol or so-called EIGRP. What we are going uh, to speak briefly about will be some theory. Then uh, we will show you where we actually implemented it for the INET. And uh, some part will be also spent on the live demonstration and fingers crossed. Hopefully it will be working and you will be able to see at least uh, glimpses of how the EIGRP is currently working uh, in vanilla INET. And uh, last but not least, I will at least mention our current repository and the future work. So the main motivation behind our research is uh, the same as in previous years. Currently at the Brno University of Technology, we are interested in routing switching, namely in enterprise networks. So uh, we are keen in different routing protocols and switching technologies. And I would say uh, comparing to the previous years, we've decided that a lot of work that was invested into the ANSA project that was developing different wired routing protocols uh, over the INET, uh, we decided to push our uh, contributions directly into the INET because obviously INET has far more users than ANSA is ever going to have. Therefore, uh, today I will briefly introduce a theory behind EIGRP and show you the implementation. So EIGRP is in this kind of the family of routing protocols, distance vector routing protocol. It is hybrid distance vector routing protocol. And the reason why it is called hybrid is that it combines the best features of uh, link state protocols, such as uh, link detection, neighbor status, and other ones with, uh, I would say, lightweightness of the distance vector protocols, such as RIP or Babel. EIGRP was formerly Cisco proprietary protocol that originally was developed uh, by one guy or by one professor from Stanford Research Institute. Uh, it is a long time ago, I would say if I will briefly switch, I can show you the original sources for EIGRP, which was uh, actually this paper published in 1994. Then for many years, uh, EIGRP was Cisco proprietary, which meant that nobody was able to create uh, EIGRP implementations for their own devices. So no one, uh, including for instance, HP, Juniper, or uh, uh, other software routers such as Zebra Quagga was uh, willing to create their own EIGRP implementation, even though it uh, will be compatible. Uh, this ended in the year 2016, where Cisco finally decided to uh, lift at least part of this intellectual property ban for EIGRP and published uh, RFC 7868 uh, that described the most of the features of the EIGRP and give everyone a chance to implement EIGRP according to this, RF according to this RFC which hopefully would be compatible with also other implementations. EIGRP is multi-protocol, uh, has uh, is a multi-protocol routing, offers a multi-protocol routing, which means that it can uh, carry routing information, not only for the IP protocol, but also for IPX, IPX Apple Talk, or any kind of the future protocol. It has very nice uh, protocol design, which allows EIGRP to be extended quite easily, for instance, comparing to the OSPF. Moreover, uh, when speaking about IPv, IP protocol, IPv4 and IPv6, EIGRP is multi-address or has a multi-address family support, which means that you can combine IPv4 and IPv6 routes in a single routing update. Among the main features, is this protocol uh, are those protocol dependent modules uh, that allows EIGRP to be network layer agnostic and operate not only with IPv4 and IPv6, but with any other networking protocol. 
Uh, EIGRP also controls neighbors. So with each and every neighbor on each and every interface, EIGRP maintains neighbor table where uh, you can check the status of your neighbor and act accordingly to this status. So for instance, if some of your neighbor is down, you will recognize uh, this thing quite fast due to the hello packets that are exchanged periodically between neighbors. Since EIGRP is uh, implemented over network protocol, it works directly over any layer three protocol, it needed to include also reliable communication features such as acknowledgement, sequence numbers and other ones. This is the submodule that is called RTP and thanks to this RTP reliable transport protocol, EIGRP guarantees that no routing update is ever missed. The most famous part uh, that was spent a lot of research on is dual algorithm, so diffuse update algorithm that can be described with the thin state machines. And this dual is actually governing the wall operation of EIGRP. Comparing to uh, routing protocols such as RIP, OSPF, or BGP, the EIGRP is currently the one and only routing protocol in the ver world of wired routing protocols that guarantees loop-free topology even under conditions when the network is actually converging to a new state. So any given time or moment, you can be sure that there is no loop created with the EIGRP. And there are a couple of uh, research papers that are proving this functionality or proving this feature using a standard math tools. In case of EIGRP, I will briefly mention the terminology that EIGRP is using. So for instance, imagine that we have this kind of the topology where we have router A with neighbors B, C, and D, and the router A is searching for routes towards a router E over here in the bottom. So in case of routers B, C, and D, there is one router that is called a successor router. That is the router or next hop IP address that leads towards a destination, in our case, router E, using the shortest possible. In order to measure, let's say, the metric or properties of edges in the graph, EIGRP is using reported distance and feasible distance. Reported distance is distance reported by a neighbor, so B, C, and D, when they are telling router A that there exists a route towards router E. So in case, in our uh, scenario, reported distance from router B to router E is 10. Okay? Reported distance from uh, router E towards router E is 30. Uh, when we will take this reported distance and calculate to it a distance to, uh, from our router towards its direct neighbor, we will receive a feasible distance. So feasible distance is basically sum of reported distance and the distance to our neighbor. So in this case, the feasible distance would be 20. 20 as a metric from router A to router E through router B. EIGRP guarantees the looplessness of uh, its convergence uh, under something called feasible condition, where feasible conditions condition is satisfied any time when reported distance is lower than, strictly lower than feasible distance. So for instance, routes through B and routes through C satisfy these feasible conditions and under any given moment, they provide loop-free routing to EIGRP. A little bit about diffuse computation algorithm. If you are keen or know something about link state algorithms, their main feature is that they know exactly what is the topology. Uh, in order to discover how the topology looks like, First, link state routers needs to uh, exchange all information how all other routers are in inter interconnected through the topology. In case of EIGRP and in case of distance vector protocols, they do not have this uh, possibility. They, are, uh, they, they only know the topology through the eyes of their neighbors. So whenever 
some router needs to discover a route to a different destination, the router it turns into the active state and asks its direct neighbors. If neighbors know the response, they will respond to a querying router. If neighbors do not know the response, they will propagate this uh, query further into the topology. But sooner or later, all routers will respond to all original queriers so that uh, the router that was the initiator of this dual computation will receive all answers to its queries and discover, okay, I know a route to a destination through my neighbors. Uh, what is also interesting about EIGRP comparing to all other routing protocols is how it handles a metric. Usually, or all the time, metric shows you some uh, preference of the routes uh, through from the same routing source, which means that if we have two routes, for instance, in the RIP, based on the metric uh, and based on the value of the metric, we can tell which route is more preferable than the other. In case of metric, lower means always better. Different routing protocols have different view on the metric. So RIP, for instance, is using hop counts, where OSPF is using cost that is derived from the speed of the link. EIGRP combines multiple features of route in order to uh, compute the metric. So in case of EIGRP, it uh, takes into account the lowest bandwidth and route towards a destination, cumulative sum of delay towards a destination. Optionally, it can include reliability, how reliable a link is, uh, which means how many errors are appearing in a given period of time. Load on en route, which means how saturated is the link with other traffic. Jitter, some variation of the delay, and also even the energy consumption which makes EIGRP interesting selection, for instance, for a wireless networks where a battery and uh, the energy consumption by propagating some packet is uh, at stake. By default, EIGRP is computing metric only using bandwidth and delay. Nevertheless, uh, which shows this default formula. Nevertheless, all other properties such as reliability load, jitter and energy can be included. So the final metric will be computed using inputs from all these parameters. EIGRP, the functionality of EIGRP can be described using this finite state machine. I'm not going into the details. Nevertheless, uh, I would say comparing to other routing protocols, the finite state machine that is describing the whole functionality of EIGRP has something like 18 transitions. So it is not that hard, but also not that easy. We were, nevertheless, we were able to uh, implement this finite state machine that is also partially described in the functionality in ERA, RFC. The way how we, we have implemented is that uh, we've created a new EIGRP module. This in a layer above a network layer connected to a dispatchers uh, that may communicate with IPv4 and IPv6 modules directly in INET. And the EIGRP module consists of uh, IPv4 and IPv6 six section where uh, in case of uh, any address family protocol, it contains a neighbor table, a list of neighbors and their statuses, topology table that uh, contains a working database for EIGRP from which only the best routes are then put into the routing table of a router, and interface table, a list of interfaces on which EIGRP is enabled and should be working. Uh, the EIGRP module has a structured configuration, and for this configuration, we are using XML description, such as the one described over here, uh, which I would say mimics a usual uh, or which uh, corresponds to a usual configuration steps on the Cisco routers when you would like to configure EIGRP instance on that particular router. So basically, uh, you can address interfaces. 
uh, in this case, IPv6 with IPv6 addresses. For IPv4 addresses, we are using a network configurator. And uh, properties of EIGRP instance, either for IPv4 or IPv6, where you will specify which uh, networks or which, uh, yeah, which networks should be included into uh, EIGRP process. Now I will pass it to my colleague Jan. So I will stop sharing and I will just check that everyone has heard me or yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. hi everyone. You can uh, share your screen and continue. Yes. Ahead. So, um, um, I would like to show you quick, um, quick uh, presentation of our implementation of AIGRP. I think it works quite well, and it will. They, there were like four people that worked on this, and. Um, it works uh, quite well. So, uh, one second. So, uh, in this uh, demonstration, uh, I will be using this uh, simple topology. Uh, this uh, topology has uh, for um, AIGRP routers and uh, for land all these uh, links between uh, routers and lands have uh, same bandwidth and delay um, uh, also settings of AGRP are exactly the same so things like AGRP timers or uh, metric computation are exactly the same and also all these uh, routers are in the same area. I have configured this uh, topology on both uh, IPv4 and IPv6 and our implementation supports both at the same time. So I will now switch into Omnet itself. So here in Omnet uh, here is our topology. I have uh, also opened up some uh, tables that uh, are quite interesting to watch during the simulation. All of these tables are uh, belong to R1. So uh, the top table is a neighbor table that should hopefully show R2 and R3 eventually. Then there is uh, topology table of R1, which uh, contains uh, all known routes around the network, around the topology. At, at this time, it only contains routes that are directly connected to, to R1. And this uh, bottom table is a uh, routing table. So now if I run the simulation a bit, we can see that R1 will try to find its neighbors so it will send hello hello message to r2 and r2 with should should eventually respond with its hello message and uh, now i will pause it a bit we can now see that uh, neighbor table of r1 was uh, populated with one entry which corresponds to our r2 so now when these two routers are neighbors, they will exchange update packets. So uh, they should uh, exchange update, update messages and then acknowledgements. And eventually after, after one more update, we should see that these uh, these two tables changed quite a bit yeah now we can see that r1 has uh, three new entries in uh, its topology table and this corresponds to uh, routes 
known by uh, R2. When this uh, topology table is updated, uh, all roads are uh, should or could be uh, recalculated and entered into routing table. So we can now see that we have three new routes uh, available via uh, R2. If I now skip uh, some time in the simulation until all these routers exchange these initial update messages, we can now see that uh, there is a lot of uh, a lot of uh, entries in topology table and routing table. Some routes in the topology table are um, not meeting uh, feasible conditions and this is uh, marked um, or you can uh, you can spot these because they don't have the is successor tag um, in them. So uh, we now have all the routes around the network. So, for example, this uh, uh, D route it corresponds to LAN 4. And if we take a look at the routing table, we can now see that there is uh, there is uh, route D, which is network D, which is uh, LAN 4. And uh, our neighbor table now contains two entries. One is for R2 and one is for R3. So if I go back to my presentation, um, here is a topology table of uh, Cisco devices and here is our from our implementation. We can see that the Cisco is much smaller and that's because Cisco, at, um, unless you ask for it, won't show you the, the routes that are not meeting the feasible condition. So only the routes which are successors are shown in the Cisco. So that's why the Cisco is much shorter. But other than that, they are the same. So for example, route 23, we can take a look at route 23 to uh, two different entries, 12 and 2, 13, 3, 12, 2, 13, 3. There is um, also extra uh, zero in the metric in the Cisco. That's because uh, uh, I, I used accidentally different uh, speed on, on Cisco, but other than that, they are exactly the same. Now, if I proceed, here is a topology table for IPv4. We can again see that they are exactly the same. This time I even used, I even asked Cisco to show me all, all the different uh, routes it knows. So it even shows me routes that are not uh, feasible successors for, so for example, this route uh, has, no, but this network has only one uh, successor, but two different uh, entries. If I take a look at our implementation, uh, network 3.0 is here and only one feasible successor and second one is not a feasible successor. So this is again, uh, is exactly the same. And uh, here is uh, last tables. Here are some last tables that I will show you today. This is a routing table of uh, Cisco and this is our routing table. Uh, routes edit by IGRP are uh, marked with a letter D. So in this case of Cisco, it's this free and these free. There is, uh, there, are, there is only two of these, but there, is, uh, there are two, two routes to one network. And in our implementation, there are three 
uh, three rounds and they are rather free, so six in total again. If we now take a look, for example, at these uh, these three, these are the lands. The, so this is land two, land three, land four. We can now see that uh, they are available via these uh, these hops. And if we take a look at uh, our implementation, we can see that they are they are exactly the same. So uh, again, it works uh, as I said quite well. And uh, this is um, everything I have uh, prepared for this uh, short uh, presentation for you. So okay. I back will to Vladimir. Jan as uh, let's say more of the slides. So please proceed one slide more. So uh, let me wrap up the uh, this presentation. So what we have presented you is a code contribution for the INET 4.2 that we are going to extend through the pull request uh, very soon with the EIGRP simulation modules. Apart from the pull request with the simulation modules, we are also going to prepare EIGRP tutorials for the INET. And uh, hopefully Jan will also in upcoming months deliver RIP and BGP uh, tutorials that the whole community can use in order to learn more about the EIGRP, BGP and RIP and the ways how routing protocols are actually working. Should we proceed further? And that would be all. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention. 